morning, whoever you are, wherever you find yourself on your life or spiritual journey, welcome to worship at the First Congregational Church of Woodstock, and happy Valentine's Day. Thank you for welcoming us into your hearts and into your homes this morning. Let us join together in the great spirit of love and celebration and sing our opening song. Spirit, come, our hearts are flow, our spirits long to be made whole, that inward love guide every deed, for this we pray, to be so free. My friends, in the spirit of love and compassion and hope, I encourage you, if you're comfortable, to share your prayers this morning. If you're watching us on Facebook Live or on Zoom, you can enter those prayers in the chat. You can also share your prayers with one of the deacons or with me at any time during the week. My email is revkev at firstchurchwoodstock.org. This morning, we pray for a number of people within our community. Continued prayers for Becky and Catherine, George, Joan, Josephine, John, Linda, Leslie, Lloyd, Robert, Tony, and Sandy. Special travel mercies are asked for Lynn and for Carl as they travel over the next couple of weeks and continued travel mercies and prayers for Ellen and Jesse and Finlay as they have left last week to go and spend some time with Jesse's mom who took ill and so continued special prayers for Jesse's mom as well. We ask this morning prayers for all the people in our community who are facing economic uncertainty, for those who are hungry or homeless, for those who are facing illnesses of the mind, the body, and the spirit. Special prayers for everyone who have been affected by COVID. And prayers for all of our health care workers, including our deacon Jacob, who has recently left to go and serve a hospital for a little time in Pennsylvania. Prayers for him and for his family as he travels, and prayers for all of the health care workers everywhere that they feel the Spirit of God continuing to surround them and uphold them, and that all the people that they serve and care for 
may feel God's love for them through the various people who are helping to take care of them and us in our hours of need. Will you pray with me? Gracious, merciful God, you raise us up from valley places and bring us down from our high horses. And when we are tempted to settle in, settle down, or simply settle for what was or is or might have been, you shine your light upon us, that we glimpse your dream dancing among our questions, challenges, and conflicts. In your presence, our lives expand and broken dreams are transformed into passion for a more hope-filled and loving world. Before you and in the company of others, we lift up our joys and share our burdens and concerns. For each joy lifted, grant us peace, and for each concern expressed, expand our compassion as we join to share the gratitude and the pains of our brothers, sisters, neighbors, strangers, and friends. Spirit of love, keep us grounded in your love that we worship you above all others and all else. When we are tempted to remain on the mountaintop hideaways or getaways or high places of our own selfish ambitions and tribal agenda, break open our hearts, minds, and lives. Take us by the hand and lead us on the path that winds from mountaintops through deep valleys and into the fullness of life lived fully in your humble, fierce, just love of everyone. God and community, holy in one, hear our prayers. Amen. From your Valentine. There was once a man named Valentine who lived in ancient Rome. He did not live in one of those big white houses that were made of smooth marble, but he lived in a few rooms above the noisy street level. Valentine was a doctor. He had many things in those rooms to heal people, mostly herbs that he picked in the field outside the city. He used something like this to grind up the herbs so he could use them for medicine. Not everyone knew that Valentine was also a priest. That had to be kept a secret because in those days, it was against the law to be a Christian. Whenever anything bad happened in the city, they would blame the Christians and put them in jail. So when Valentine prayed, he did so quietly after closing his door. One day, an old man and his little girl came to Valentine's office because the little girl could not see. The old man's job was taking care of the prisoners in the big jail in Rome. Valentine knew that it would be hard to cure the little girl because she was born blind. But he loved talking to her as he put something cool and wet on her eyes to make them feel better. At night, Valentine prayed for his patients and he prayed the most for the little girl who was blind. Sometimes, when her father was busy at the jail, the little girl helped Valentine pick the herbs in the fields that he used to heal people. The little girl loved to pick crocuses, the first flowers to bloom after the winter. She gave small bouquets of them to her father. One time, when Valentine heard someone outside his door, he thought it was the little girl but instead it was Roman soldiers who broke into his home and took Valentine away. The old man at the jail could hardly believe his eyes when he saw that the soldiers brought Valentine there. But before the soldiers were to come back to take Valentine away for good, Valentine wanted to write something so he took the paper and then quickly wrote a note 
on paper and rolled it up and said, please give this to your little girl. Then he said goodbye and the old man watched as Valentine disappeared with the soldiers and he knew he would never see Valentine again. That night he went home and gave the girl the little rolled up piece of paper. She unrolled it and asked, what does it say, Father? Just then, a crocus fell to the floor. The little girl stooped to pick up the flower and to her great surprise, she could see the crocus. We remember Valentine today because he loved so much. I wonder what part of Valentine's story you like the best. I wonder what part of the story is the most important. I wonder where you might be in the story. Please pray with me. Holy One, we give you thanks for the story about your beloved child, Valentine, and how he loved so much for you. Let us show our love for others today like Valentine did so very long ago. In all your holy names, we pray. O Holy One on mountaintops and valley floors, reveal to us the light of your love. With each encounter of your word, we are changed and transformed. Help us, O Holy One, to live our lives as a reflection of your love, grace, and mercy. Amen. Our first reading comes from Psalm 50, verses 1 through 6. God our God speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. God comes and won't be silent. A devouring fire goes before God while storms rage all around. God summons heaven and earth to the trial of God's people. Gather to me, my faithful ones, who make their covenant with me by sacrifice. The heaven affirms God's justice because it is God who is the judge. Our second reading comes from Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 8. Six days after that, Jesus took Peter and James and John and led them up a mountain where they could be alone. And there Jesus was transfigured before their eyes. The clothes Jesus wore became dazzlingly white, whiter than any earthly bleach could make them. Elijah appeared to them, as did Moses, and the two were talking with Jesus. Then Peter spoke to Jesus. Rabbi, he said, how wonderful it is for us to be here. Let us make three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter did not know what he was saying, so overcome were they all with awe. Then a cloud formed, overshadowing them, and there came a voice from out of the cloud. This is my beloved, my own, listen to this one. Then suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore only Jesus. May these words comfort, encourage, and challenge us. Thanks be to God. On this day when so many people around the world are focused on celebrating some form of love or another, I wonder, I actually encourage you to reflect on your own lives for a moment, on your relationship with yourself, with others, with creation, with our Creator, and wonder for a moment, where are the places? Who are the people with whom? Maybe your relationships could use a little bit more grace or love or mercy. What are the places in your life? And what might it take in order to move from hurt to hope, from fragmentation to fullness, from fear to love. There's a story I heard a while ago. It has to do a lot, I think, with how it is that we live in this world that seems to be forever trapped within these conflicts. How it is that despite the fact that we seem to experience similar things, Oftentimes, we see things so differently. And why it is that 
It's important that we make time and space in order to listen to the stories of others, in order to listen deeply to the hearts and the hurts and to the hopes, in order for us to see that we can be so much more when we are more because we are together. You see, the story is that there was a couple that had been married for some 40 or so years, and finally, after a lot of conflict, they decide to go and see a marriage counselor. And so they're there, and they're sitting in the counselor's office, and he says, so tell me what's going on. And she turns and looks at her husband and then to the counselor and, and, and the wife says, he doesn't love me. And the husband is completely shocked and surprised at this, this, this point when she says that and says, what, what, what do you mean? She says, for 40 years, every time that we've had some bread, made a sandwich, had some toast, you Give me the end beats. If you really end bits, if you really loved me, you wouldn't do such a thing. Why do you say that? The therapist asks. Well, because she says, I grew up in a large family and we never had very much. And so when my older sisters and brothers would have their sandwiches, all that would be left over for me would be the two tiny little end pieces. I went through most of my childhood having sandwiches and toast that were nothing more than the itty bitty little scraps at the ends of the loaf of bread. The husband says, oh my goodness, no, no, no. You see, you don't understand. When I grew up in my family, my mom and my grandma, they would always save me the ends. I like those ends and they're the best bits. And I've been saving them and giving them to you as a special gift. Two people experiencing the exact same thing can completely see something very differently. And, 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 and it's the failure for us to be able to listen and to see beyond our own seeing, that, that I think that has created this world in which we are living, this world in which it seems like we are completely entrenched in fear, in misunderstanding, in brokenness, and in irreconcilable differences. And yet, it doesn't need to be that way. And I think that that's the point. In these moments of questions and challenges and conflicts, that God in Christ is trying to help us to see things more clearly. It is what I think happens that day when Jesus takes John and James and Peter up onto that mountainside, when for a moment they glimpse and they get and they finally start to understand and start to see that he's much more than just a wise rabbi, that this is someone in whom and through whom God's light burns brightly. And yet, Peter, filled with fear, doesn't know what to say and doesn't know what to do. And so he says, isn't it great that we're here? Maybe we'll build a monument or two. Maybe a shelter to protect us out of our fear. It's that moment when what? The clouds roll in and the skies break open. And finally God no longer silent, speaks. If we're not in conversation with one another, if we're not listening deeply and understanding one another's stories, we risk, we risk the possibility of believing 
the things that we think we believe, of not seeing beyond our own stories, of letting all of our assumptions inform our reactions, and remaining trapped in these theaters of our broken relationships. It's like, for me, that's what these stories are all about. That's what this story is, always has to be about. About us moving beyond our fear. About us finding the confidence in order to stop trying to memorialize all of our hurt and all of our fear and all of our fragmentation and all of our brokenness. Stop trying to build the shelters in order to keep others out and keep things in. But for us to actually live in the brightness and the hope in the glory of the living God, for us to actually live with the confidence, believing that in this moment that we might actually glimpse God's love burning brightly among, in, with, and even through us. Because within each moment, we have the possibility to see things differently. What would it be like if we spent our lives trying to weave ourselves together, trying to find ways that we might nourish and nurture the spirit and the hope of one another, that we might use our time and our presence, our words and our hearts in order to transform our hurts and the hurts of others into a much more hopeful story. I believe that that is what this story is about and these stories are about. About God and Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, helping us to see things more clearly, helping us to live more hopefully, helping us to live in ways that illuminate our lives and the lives of others in relationship so that we can see that we are all, or all are part of God's ever unfolding, all enfolding, bigger and brighter love story. <laughs>
your brightness stands transfigured and complete. my invitation in the February share, I would like to invite you to join me this afternoon from 3 to 4.30 for a mini introduction to A Course in Miracles. A Course in Miracles is a path of spiritual development that takes the form of an educational course. Its core message is one of love and healing and inner peace. So I have been walking the path of A Course in Miracles for almost 15 years now. And I have really found it to be a course in loving kindness. So if you are interested, um, you can put something in the comments on Facebook here, um, put something in the chat on Zoom, or let me know during coffee hour. You can also email me at christinamanulo at gmail.com and I will get that information over to you for this afternoon's session again um, for today, February 14th from 3 to 4.30. Um, I also have a couple other dates this month I'll be offering it. So if today doesn't work for you, please reach out and let me know and I will get you that information as well. So thank you and happy Valentine's Day. Today, immediately following our closing song, we will have a virtual coffee hour. We will have a time to check in, to share some prayers that we weren't able to incorporate in worship, and just find out how things are going. And then beginning around 11.15 or 11.30, Christina Manilo is going to be hosting, again, her second hour conversation, finding meaning in the message. Lent is right around the corner, and so we've got two other e events for you to check out this week. One happens on Tuesday evening as we celebrate Fat Tuesday, the coming of Mardi Gras Pancake Supper with a virtual Pancake Supper and Mardi Gras celebration. So if you haven't done so, I encourage you to stop by the church and pick up your Mardi Gras bags. It does have a mask and some beads as well as some pancake mix. And then we are going to be having a Zoom virtual Mardi Gras pancake dinner this year. So uh, that'll be happening around 6 o'clock on Tuesday evening via Zoom. We will post that information for you if you didn't get it or see it in this week's weekly email. And then on Wednesday evening, we are joining with the other congregational churches here in Woodstock with Good Shepherd as well as with the East Woodstock Congregational Church for a virtual Ash Wednesday service. That service will be taking place at 7 p.m. That is going to be done via Zoom only. We will send you the link with all of the information so that you can participate in that. We will not be able to do the imposition of ashes because we are virtual. However, it is going to be an opportunity for us to create some space to grieve the many things that we've been having to let go and, 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 and um, postpone in this season that we've been in for the last year now, as well as an opportunity for us to um, create some space to start the 40-day pilgrimage and the spiritual journey 
that is this season of Lent. So please do join us as we begin and mark this season with an Ash Wednesday service through Zoom on Wednesday evening. Again, thank you for everybody who continues to make this ministry happen and keep things going despite the physical distancing and social distancing that we've had to do. So thank you so much for the many ways that you continue to contribute your, your time, your talent, your gifts, your prayer, your presence um, in order to make things continue to happen. If you are able to continue to give financially, we say thank you for that. And um, you can give online at firstchurchwoodstock.org slash giving, or you can mail your checks to the church or drop them by Monday through Friday when the office is open, 8 to 12. Will you please now join as we sing the doxology? Will you join me in the spirit of prayer? Creator God, we ask your blessing upon all of the many gifts that have been so freely given this day and throughout the weeks to continue to help support this ministry in so many different ways. We ask that you continue to give us the, the presence of your Holy Spirit, that we use these gifts with wisdom in order to follow and find, to explore the way of love that leads to renewal, hope, and love resurrected in our community, in our lives, and in your world. We ask all these things in your many, many names. Amen. Let us join together in our closing song. Swing low, sweet chariot, come and for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, come and for to carry me home. I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? A coming for to carry me home. A band of angels are coming after me. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Come and for to carry me home. If you get there before I do, a coming for to carry me home. Tell everybody I'm a coming to, a coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home, swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home, the brightest day that I ever saw. A coming for to carry me home, when Jesus washed my sins away. A coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. 
swing low, sweet chariot, come and fold to carry me home. I'm sometimes up and sometimes down. A coming forward to carry me home, but still my soul is a heavenly bound. A coming forward to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming forward to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. Thank you again for joining us for our virtual worship service. If you are watching us through Facebook Live, I do encourage you to join us over on Zoom immediately following our postludes so that we can have a quick virtual coffee hour check-in, find out how you're doing, share a few prayers and catch up, and then hang around that same Zoom link we are going to be using for our second hour conversation, Finding Meaning in the Message, hosted by Christina Manilow. For everybody, as we head out into the world, may you go remembering that whoever you are, wherever you find yourself on your life or spiritual journey, that in each moment we are living through these threshold moments. We have the power to transform each moment, interaction, every relationship, into a moment in which love grows, life thrives, thrives, and hope is resurrected once more. Let us go, transforming fear and uncertainty into the means through which love shines and thrives, and life is renewed and hope resurrected. Let us go and be the church. Thanks be to God. Amen.